Mercedes-Benz, valued at approximately $80 billion, is renowned as one of the oldest and most prestigious car manufacturers globally. However, amidst its current status as a coveted and costly brand, it is often overlooked that its origins were rather humble. Today, we will delve into the extraordinary tale of Mercedes-Benz and the visionary behind its creation, Carl Benz. Chapter 1 From Rags to Innovations Carl Benz, born in November 1844 in Malmberg, Germany, grew up in a low-income family after his father, a locomotive driver, passed away when Carl was just two years old. Despite financial hardships, Carl's mother prioritized his education, allowing him to attend school. Showing early promise in chemistry and mechanics, Carl's talents shone through. At the age of 15, he pursued mechanical engineering at the University of Karlsruhe, where he encountered Ferdinand Redtenbacher, a prominent figure who revolutionized the field into a technical science. Redtenbacher believed that steam engines used in railways and boats were becoming outdated. Under Redtenbacher's mentorship, Carl's fascination with horseless carriages flourished. As an avid bicycle rider, Carl began experimenting with his bicycle seeking ways to create a motorized vehicle. Despite previous attempts by other engineers and inventors, Carl noticed that the early self-propelled vehicles, primarily based on steam engine technology, were not practical. Inspired by his vision, Carl persevered, dedicating himself to proving the feasibility of his concept. After graduating from the University of Karlsruhe at 19, Carl worked various engineering and construction jobs for seven years. Although he struggled to find his place in these roles, he accumulated valuable knowledge, which he would later apply to his venture. In 1871, at the age of 27, Carl joined forces with mechanic August Ritter to establish an iron foundry and mechanical workshop in Mannheim. Simultaneously, Carl continued his pursuit of developing a motorized carriage. Unfortunately, Ritter proved unreliable, and their company faced significant challenges, including the impounding of their tools by local authorities. However, during this period, Carl met Bertha Ringer, who would become his wife. Coming from a wealthy family, Bertha recognized Carl's potential and used her dowry to buy out Ritter's share of the company, granting Carl in herself full control. Together, they managed to turn the business around and keep it afloat for the next decade. Amidst these struggles, Carl's genius emerged as he made significant advancements in his side experiments. In 1879, he developed a gasoline two-stroke engine. To generate additional revenue, Carl began patenting his inventions, including engine speed regulation, battery system ignition, spark plugs, carburetors, clutches, gear shifts, and the water radiator. These designs brought him closer to realizing his dream of a horseless carriage while also expanding the product range of his business. However, Carl's business did not thrive as expected. Rising production costs led to demands from banks to incorporate the venture. Forced to collaborate with other investors, Carl transformed his business into a joint stock company in 1882. Ultimately, he retained only 5% of the company's shares and was relegated from his position. He lost his influence over the company's decision-making and design processes, leaving him frustrated. Carl then decided to leave the corporation the following year, packing up his belongings and pursuing a new path. Chapter 2 Benson C's Early Years After leaving his previous company, Carl faced a difficult setback but it fueled his determination to succeed. His love for bicycles led him to Max Rose and Friedrich Wilhelm, owners of a bicycle repair shop in Mannheim. Together, they established Benson C and focused in manufacturing industrial machines and stationary gas engines. Unlike Carl's previous venture, this new endeavor started well and quickly became profitable. With his steady income and a staff of 25 people, Carl finally shifted his main focus to his dream of building an automobile powered by his gas engine. Instead of simply adding a motor to a carriage, Carl designed the carriage around the motor. Using bicycle technology, he created what many considered to be the first true automobile, the Benz Patent Motor Wagon in 1885. 
This two-seater vehicle featured three wire wheels forming a tricycle and ran on a gasoline four-stroke motor. The one-cylinder engine produced around two-thirds of horsepower and had a top speed of approximately 7 miles per hour. Realizing the significance of his creation, Carl tested and refined the vehicle before publicly showcasing it in the summer of 1886. However, the response from critics was mixed. While some admired his invention, many were skeptical and fearful. Some believed the vehicle could explode, and there were even rumors that Carl was the devil driving an infernal carriage. Carl's business partners were also unsupportive, as his obsession with the automobile took his focus away from their work. They questioned the usefulness of his invention, arguing that it was not faster than a horse, prone to breakdowns, and dependent on fuel. Despite the challenges, Carl remained convinced that his horseless carriage was the future. In 1888, he became the first person in the world to manufacture cars for sale. His wife, a strong supporter, often stayed with him in the workshop, offering new suggestions. However, even with added improvements, people struggled to see Carl's vision. The few who purchased the cars could only use them for short distances and required constant mechanical assistance. Additionally, the vehicles were expensive, limiting accessibility to the wealthy elite. And even then, many didn't like the noise and messiness of the cars. It became clear that Carl needed to convince the world that the automobile was here to stay. Chapter 3 Making History on Wheels Summer of 1888, Bertha Benz embarked on a groundbreaking journey that would leave a significant impact on the history of automobiles. Without informing her husband or the authorities, Bertha, accompanied by her two sons, took Carl's car on a 66-mile trip from Mannheim to Forsheim, her mother's place. This venture was unprecedented, as no car or motorized carriage had ever attempted such a long journey before. Bertha's purpose was to demonstrate the importance and potential of Benz's invention. However, the trip was far from easy. Bertha encountered many challenges along the way, including dusty and rough roads designed for horses. She had to stop at a pharmacy to refuel and even perform mechanical repairs. The journey took over 12 hours to complete, but Bertha and her sons eventually arrived safely in Forsheim. Most importantly, Bertha achieved her goal of capturing people's attention and emphasizing the significance of the automobile. The Benz motor wagon then gained widespread recognition and brought considerable publicity to Carl's business. Following the trip, Benz and C experienced rapid expansion. By 1890, it became the second largest engine manufacturer in Germany, primarily due to the sale of stationary gasoline engines rather than cars. However, the addition of new business partners, Friedrich von Fischer and Julius Gans, marked a turning point. They handled the business and marketing aspects, allowing Carl to focus on his engineering goals. He patented several new car innovations, including the planetary gear transmission, double pivot steering, and a boxer configuration flat engine. Responding to the advice of his partners, Carl designed and manufactured an improved automobile the Benz Victoria, which was introduced in 1893. This luxurious two-passenger vehicle featured the three-horsepower engine capable of reaching 11 miles per hour. The Benz Victoria sold well due to its reliability. However, it was the subsequent design, the more affordable Benz Velo, that truly took off. With a production volume of around 1,200 units, the Benz Velo became the world's first large-scale production car. As a result, Benson C became the largest automobile company globally during the 1890s and early 1900s. Despite their newfound success, Benson C faced intense competition from a nearby company, Daimler Motorin Gesellschaft. Chapter 4 A Showdown of Speed in Engineering Daimler Motorin Gesellschaft, led by Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach, became a formidable competitor to Benson C. Daimler, known for his competitiveness and business acumen, brought the company closer to Benz in terms of vehicle appeal and comfort. In 1892, Daimler introduced their first commercially sold car, followed by a two-cylinder car in 1894, and their front-engine model, the Daimler Phoenix, in 1897. However, 
Gottlieb Daimler passed away in 1900, leaving Wilhelm Maybach in charge. Under Maybach's leadership, the crowning achievement came in 1901 with the Mercedes 35 horsepower. This car was groundbreaking, featuring a powerful gas engine, a wider and larger body with a tailored steel chassis, and a lowered center of mass. Originally designed for racing, the car was named after wealthy businessman Emil Jelinek's daughter, Mercedes, and achieved great success, winning multiple races and reaching a top speed of 56 miles per hour. Daimler seized the opportunity and rebranded all their vehicles as Mercedes. They produced new models for both racing and public use, gaining significant attention and market share. Meanwhile, Carl Benz's partners sought to counter this competition by bringing in French designers to create a faster model without Carl's approval. This decision infuriated Carl, who disapproved of auto racing and preferred safe and careful driving. The car built by his team was not successful, leading to crisis for the Benz company between 1903 and 1904. Frustrated, Carl decided to leave the company while remaining on its board of directors. Eventually, he agreed to allow his cars to race, which proved to be a turning point for the company's success. Benz achieved remarkable racing victories, including a 120 horsepower racer in 1908 that traveled from Leningrad to Moscow at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. The 200 horsepower Blitzen Benz, built in 1909, set a new speed record, reaching over 140 miles per hour in 1911. This elevated Benz to a level of desirability comparable to Daimler. However, the outbreak of World War I disrupted both companies, leading to economic difficulties. To survive, Daimler and Benz put their rivalry aside and signed an agreement in 1924 to combine their production and marketing efforts. They retained their individual names while working together to reduce costs. However, the German economy worsened, forcing a complete merger in 1926 to form Daimler-Benz. Under this new entity, the vehicles were rebranded as Mercedes-Benz. Impressive models such as the Mercedes-Benz Type 630 and the S, SS, and SSK models were released in the late 1920s. One notable engineer who contributed to these vehicles were Ferdinand Porsche, whose name would become renowned in the automotive industry. Carl remained on the board of directors of Daimler-Benz and witnessed the success of his automobiles, marveling at the progress of the auto industry in his lifetime. Carl Benz passed away in April 1929 at the age of 84. Following his death, the company continued to thrive, becoming a renowned performance car manufacturer. However, it experienced some of its most prosperous years under the leadership of Adolf Hitler. Chapter 5. Shifting Gears, Adapting to Changing Times In 1933, when Adolf Hitler rose to power in Germany, he aimed to showcase German engineering and technology to the world, enhancing his political agenda. One way he sought to achieve this was by promoting German cars in international motorsports. Hitler provided substantial subsidies to Daimler-Benz, enabling them to participate in Grand Prix races. Daimler-Benz invested significant time and resources into building incredible fast cars and their dominance became evident on the racetrack. From 1934 to 1939, Mercedes-Benz, a division of Daimler-Benz, excelled in Grand Prix races, achieving speeds up to 200 miles per hour with their W25 and W125 models. However, they faced competition from another German automaker, Auto Union. Sponsored by its country, Auto Union also enjoyed success during this period, winning 25 races from 1935 to 1937. These triumphs established Germany as a leader in motorsports, with Mercedes-Benz emerging as Hitler's preferred car brand. Hitler often used the Mercedes-Benz 770, a luxury vehicle mainly utilized by high-ranking Nazi officials and Axis representatives. The outbreak of World War II in 1939 presented serious challenges for the Daimler-Benz company. Demand for civilian passenger cars diminished, leading them to shift their focus to manufacturing military vehicles, tanks, submarines, and aircraft engines for the Nazi military. 
Their primary line of business became military trucks capable of transporting supplies. By 1942, Daimler-Benz ceased production of public cars entirely, redirecting all resources towards the war effort. As the war escalated, the company faced a shortage of workforce for increased armament production. To compensate, they began recruiting women and utilized forced labor. Forced laborers including prisoners of war, abducted civilians, and concentration camp detainees were subjected to grueling conditions and long hours of work. Many suffered from severe malnutrition, mistreatment, and even torture, resulting in numerous deaths. By 1944, almost half of Daimler-Benz's 63,000 employees were forced laborers. At the war's end in 1945, Daimler-Benz experienced significant setbacks due to the Potsdam Agreement. German assets abroad were confiscated for reparations, resulting in the loss of foreign subsidiaries, affiliates, and branches. The company had to start anew, rebuilding from its domestic plants. Daimler-Benz underwent restructuring and had to address the management's past involvement with the Nazi regime. These changes enabled the company to obtain a production permit from American occupation authorities in 1946. Despite severe bomb damage to their factories, Mercedes-Benz focused on producing ambulances, police patrol vehicles, and delivery vans based on their 170V models. They also used one of their plants as a repair facility for U.S. military transports. By 1947, Mercedes-Benz resumed production of passenger vehicles, manufacturing only 1,045 units of their 170V model that year. Remarkably, despite challenging circumstances, Daimler-Benz managed to turn a profit within one year. In the 1950s, Mercedes-Benz regained its prominence, making a strong comeback in motorsports and achieving successful global sales. By 1954, the company had already exceeded a billion dollars in profits. Over the years, Mercedes-Benz transformed its image and became one of the most valuable car brands worldwide. However, none of this would have been possible without Carl Benz, who, despite his humble beginnings, challenges, and critics, had the courage and determination to turn his dream into a reality. I hope you enjoyed this video, truly a story of rags to innovations. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more luxury content. I'll see you in the next one.